What's up, fam? It's week four of Testimony Tuesday. <laughs> so on the last episode, I talked to you guys about my sophomore year when I transferred and how I tore my hamstring. So if you haven't seen the videos last week or the ones before, you should probably check those out first. So this week, I'm going to talk to you guys about my junior year in college. And my junior year is when I was actually healed up. Everything was going fine. I had a great fall training once again. But then my hamstring would tighten up and cramp up like super bad and I would lose the flexibility and my range of motion and I wouldn't even be able to touch my toes. It would cause me not to be able to sprint or anything. So it would just affect my training when it got towards competition time. So since these injuries began to happen, I was not able to compete indoor. I only ran one indoor race and it was at the Arkansas indoor track where the banks are like super high. And since we were just testing it out, since I was fresh from an injury, my coach decided that he just wanted me to do the open 400. So I ran the open 400 and everything was fine. It was nice and smooth. Uh, I won the heat. And then since, since I ran so well, he was confident enough to say, okay, well, maybe you can run the four by four also. So the next day I'm warming up, everything's going good, sprinting well. I go out and I was third leg on the relay. So once I got the baton from my teammate, I ran around the first curve. It was going well, but then when I sped up to go around the next banked curve, that's when my hamstring kind of did the same exact thing. Like, it's not like a tug, but it's like a tightness that allows me to not be able to sprint. And it makes my hamstring really feels like sensitive to touch and everything. So it was allowing me not to be able to actually sprint any longer. So the guy in front of me kind of like just took away. But of course, the type of person I am, I didn't just stop. I continued to keep running, do the best I could. So that way I can give my teammate the baton so that he can run because we've been warmed up. So why am I going to just cancel out everything? So I talked to one of my teammates. She also was from like the area that I'm from. Basically, she told me about this type of treatment that she got when she was in high school because she used to have really bad shin splits. So I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And I listened to what she told me about the treatment. I looked it up, did the research that I could because of course I'm not gonna just hop into something that's gonna cost me a lot in the long run. So I looked it up to make sure everything was safe and that I was gonna be allowed to do it. I talked to the trainers about it and Basically everything was cleared. And so once we got back home from the meet, I actually just felt like horrible because I did not understand why I keep getting injured. And I knew for a fact I had been doing what I needed to. So I just sat down and I was icing my hamstring. And I remember that I just started to cry and then I was praying and I was like, God, I promise that if you heal me, I'll help build up your kingdom please give me a sign to allow me to know why I kept getting injured. So that night I went to sleep and I was laying on my side facing the window. And then basically when I was sleeping, I woke up because I heard these like nice bells and it sounded like similar to chimes. And I was like on my side, but I lifted up my top part of my body, but I couldn't get all the way up because whatever was behind me, I guess it wasn't for me to see, but from my closet door, I heard this three times. And after hearing that, I was finally able to flip around and then I looked by my closet door to see what it was, but of course it was nothing there. And I went to my closet door and read the pill bottles that I had in there because I remember I was taking these biotin pills that were a high dosage because I was trying to grow a beard and a mustache. <laughs> but that's the reason why, because when I read the pill bottle, it said that it would severely dehydrate you if you weren't properly hydrated because the dosage was so, such a big dosage. So that's what was causing my muscles to be dehydrated and it was causing it not to like strain, but it was making it cramp up extremely bad, which was affecting the way that I was running and everything. So I stopped taking the pills 
Then I decided that I was gonna go back home and get the treatment to get me a head start so I can get back training and get ready for the outdoor season. And I went in my grandma's room and she was like screaming in surprise because she didn't know that I was coming home so soon. Hey. Oh! <laughs> Praise God. Home so soon, and also because she had just finished watching the 700 Club. It was it's a gospel television station, but before she wasn't watching that channel, and her TV switched channels, and then it switched to the 700 Club with a guy talking about his horse, and he had a race horse, and he said that his horse kept getting injured, and he didn't understand also. So. He allowed his horse to get an ozone injection and the guy said ever since his horse had got that injection he had been run, winning every race and that he was completely fine and then that's when God told my grandma that's gonna be TJ <laughs> and then as soon as she said as soon as this finished I walked through the door and then that's why she gave the reaction she did and then I actually went to the doctor the next day. And when I went there, the procedure was very quick. It didn't hurt at all. It just felt like gas going into my muscle. So basically they connect the oxygen tank to a machine that splits the molecules, O2 and O3. And they put the ozone inside of the area that has been affected. And it blows the muscle up like a balloon and allows the blood to flow to that area so that it can heal naturally. Um, after this happened, I was like extremely happy that I was able to get back on the track and actually be sprinting two weeks after, which is the quickest time I've ever been able to actually hurt my hamstring and be able to come back and sprint. So it was actually very beneficial treatment. Um, I also told my grandma that she should go because she had back pains like really bad. She couldn't even walk to the kitchen to get a glass of water and carry it to her room so she actually got an ozone injection after i did and i told her how much it would help uh, lucky to have these two women show up in the practice today because the grandson had already undergone ozone he's a track athlete at university of florida and he's about to turn pro and apparently that's his mother apparently his mom said i did an injection on his hamstring and he's doing quite well yes. and we're going to get an autograph picture on the wall here. She, Mom didn't know I was going to request that today. Uh -huh. but So Mom brought her mother in, who originally is from Georgia, and she was having back pain for a couple of months, and I'll let her tell us any other details on what was going on. Some of the back pain was bad. Oh, I, for real, I was having back pain. I couldn't do this. Now I'm able to do that. Yeah, Jess did an ozone on her lumbar back. Yes. I'm actually impressed with the results. And I could stand up now. I just feel it just a little, but when I hurt, my back will be just like it's coming apart. My lower part of back, and I can stand up. I feel it just a little. And then you had how many quarters of injections? Two. So two separate ones. I can do that. It's not hurting now. Uh, that's great. Uh-huh. Good. Couldn't yes. happen to a nicer woman. Praise God. Do you need this now? Do you want with that? Well, we'll see. Yeah. She had that because she was so much yeah, pain. Why don't you watch this right now? You, you know, there's no such mm -hmm. thing as perfect miracles, but right. if you notice that you're doing better, you're doing yes, better. Yes, I'm doing better. Yeah, I can walk. Mm -hmm. I can walk. You, you're feeling more strength and yeah, stability? Yeah, strength. No pain. You were having pain walking like this? Yes, I had pain walking. Mm. Wow. Pretty I strong. couldn't even throw the legs of water. Wow. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys for sharing. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Appreciate yes. it. Thank you. My son was so adamant about it. He's saying, Grandma, I'm telling you, he this is going to work for you. He, he said, said you need help. to go. Actually, he's the one that paid, paying for it. Mm -hmm. so. He said, yes. Grandma, help. Yes. All right, well, I'm glad to see you guys again. I'm glad he's uh, such an advocate of yes, ozone you. when we find other things aren't working. So. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. After this happened, I was back on the track running well outdoor season. I actually made a comeback to the 49 club once I ran SEC outdoor championships. I placed third and then I went to regionals, won my heat at regionals, made it to nationals. 
once I made it to nationals, uh, me and my teammate got the first and second place at the NCAA championships. And everything was just going really well. I was really happy that I was getting back to where I was before I got injured. So I was definitely thankful and grateful that God allowed me to make a comeback. And after this, I ran at my first Olympic trials. I didn't make it to the finals, but I made it to the semis. And this and just allowed me to know like this was the next stage that was coming in my life. So I was not upset at all that I didn't make it to the Olympics because I knew God had said so many other things that were gonna happen to me soon. So I just kept the faith, I kept working hard, kept pushing, and that's when everything starts to transition into the next stage of my life when I actually turn professional. But I'm not gonna say that just yet. I'm gonna leave that for you guys next week, and I'm glad I was able to share week four with you guys, and stay tuned for the rest of my story.